26A, special tax lighting. Mr. Davenport, Ms. Black. This looks official. <laughs> Good morning, commissioners. Um, I'd like to start <laughs> just with some history about how we how we got here. Some time ago, probably where time could be measured in years. Mr. Pritchard met with Stephanie and myself and um, was interested in us meeting with Harrison about looking at this fee structure because the fees for special tax lighting have been in place since 1995. Um, we respectfully were able to convince him that uh, if he would give us some time to look at the program because we knew and we thought that maybe by auditing the program we could make up for the deficit. And uh, ultimately we did put a a big dent in it um, to the tune of about forty thousand dollars through various audits. We think we're probably about four thousand or so dollars away from really having a, a bottom line. The problem with that is last year we lost around forty seven thousand dollars and so that number is just more than we think we're capable of making up uh, from just having a solid program. Um, it's discouraging, but on the same token, it gave us an opportunity to go into some of the minutiae and the details about where's that $47,000 coming from. So we did that, and what we eventually arrived at were three districts. After meeting with the tax commissioner, she agreed that we could go up to five districts in total. We currently have two. We thought we could at least handle something with three districts, and the reason why we picked three is because you have a standard district, which is what we have now, which is Cobra Head type lighting. You have a decorative district, which is the shorter poles. They don't shine out as far by the service, but they look a little bit nicer, and most people opt for the decorative line. And then we have what we call enhanced, which are areas in the county where we've just determined that these areas just have above and beyond what a normal decorative or a normal standard lighting district would have. And from that, we calculated some options. Obviously, the one that we're in favor of is a revenue neutral type option, where ultimately we took our fees out to fiscal year 2015, based on what we have in-house now, and said, how much do we need to at least try to break even? And that's where this option of revenue neutral came from, and those fees you have before you. We know that there's quite a jump with the enhanced district. We've been in conversation with representatives of those areas to try to determine maybe if there's some partnership that we could uh, obtain to lessen that impact. But ultimately, with Enhance, we're really just trying to break even. Uh, the example that I will probably share with you is the enhanced areas right now are costing the county around $28,000 a year to operate just for that particular area. Um, with those areas, if you back out how much revenue we have, we're probably at revenue around $8,000 a year. So half of that 47,000 deficit, almost half of that, is strictly from almost one, one area or areas of the county that we feel like are enhanced. So we bring this to you after doing homework uh, and ultimately after meeting with Mr. Pritchard for your consideration because ultimately we just don't believe we're going to be able to make things work with the current fee structure and just auditing uh, and tightening up what we currently have. So this morning what we're doing is we're just asking for some of your direction. Um, ultimately, based on this direction, we would come back with an official ordinance uh, at a later date. Uh, but right now we just feel like we're at a point in a crossroads where we're needing, we're needing direction in this case. Do you have any questions? I do, Mr. Davenport. <clears throat> a couple of, of clarification questions, and I, I know there's some history, obviously, with, with this issue, but the, the deficits that we've seen, current deficits, we'll say the current fiscal year. Yes, sir. Do those deficits come from previous districts that we're not getting the appropriate revenue from, or is it coming primarily from districts since we initiated the change. We did initiate a change in yes. 2010 or 2011 or 12. So where, where is the primary deficit coming from? We, um, since 95, I think we've initiated two changes. One was uh, in about 2007. Okay. What we did is we were paying for these lights to be installed. Right. 
which is similar to us maybe paving a road where the county would pave it and we would take over infrastructure. So we did away with that. We started charging for installation and saying, you have to handle installation before you come to us. The second change is we started using these conditions to make sure that when we came in, the number of lights were equating to the amount of revenue we were getting in. And that was that 2010, 2011, when we really got, just got a lot tighter with these districts. And so those two changes uh, are something we've done I think these deficits are due to previous districts and something that we just do not have, or we have a limited amount of control over, and that is how much we're being charged for power. Um, with these fees, you know, I know Oakwood EMC has had at least one change in power since 93, but the variable here is if we set these fees, the rate changes for power are something that you know could happen tomorrow that's out of our control that we throw these numbers on because that's just not something that we have total control of. Okay, I think that's the element that was missing from previous conversations. I think we have figured out how to handle paying for the actual fixture and installation, but it's the fluctuations in, in rate. Yes. Okay. Now, one of the questions we got, I'm sorry guys, I don't mean to just dominate it. Um, would, would this change, in your opinion, need to apply to existing? I, I live in a neighborhood where we have you know, I pay, I think I pay $30 a month for the lights that are, and I would be agreeable to an increase on my power bill um, if it would, if it would satisfy, satisfy this need, but are you recommending that we? We're, we're recommending that, you know, this, this apply to all 5,000 plus customers that we have. I think these are annual, you said monthly. Yeah, right, yeah. But I, I mean, that's, yes. It's right now, it's still, we're still going on an annual type fee. There are ways to do monthly, but they get much more complicated to go into billing, which is not, we don't believe that's a, right, a helpful way to do it. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go the big picture, but I'm not getting it. Should there be a way built into this that you can modify the rate structure based on the percent increases of electricity? charges every year so the county does not continue to go in the hole just instead of having to come back every that would be 20 years almost with right the water rate right we have absolutely looked at a formula you know based equation where it depends on the power rates or even an increase by percentage every year to try to accommodate for whenever the increase comes because we just um, we believe it will come I have looked at that. I had a question, Jason, um, uh, in regards to the fees. Uh, are the fees that, that you're possibly proposing usual and customary with other counties of our size? What we found we, a few years ago, we looked at, we really thought we looked at about 30, 30 counties, and we looked at how they were proposing it, and we found that it really varies by county. Some counties, like other municipalities, just pay for all the light. And they just take it on themselves to pay for that incumbently without charging districts. Some people charge the districts. Um, I can go back and check that information again just to recheck it and see how they do it. But we really found that it's very unique to the municipality. We didn't find a whole lot of common ground with, well, here's how we do it, here's how we do it, here's what the charges are. But I'll recheck that information. I appreciate it. I was just thinking back to the meeting or two we had about population growth in this area and what we expected to grow and so forth and just something to think about. Absolutely. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much.